Let's talk to our experts about this whole story. David Bonson, who's the founder and managing partner of the Bonson Group, and he's the author of There's No Free Lunch, 250 Economic Truths. And uh, he puts out the DividendCafe.com every day. And John Carney, Breitbart News Editor, Economics and Finance, and co-author of the Breitbart Business Digest. Uh, welcome, gentlemen. Um, David Bonson, my brother, bless your heart for what you did at the Buckley dinner. Bless your heart for that. I will never forget it. Never, never, never. Anyway, David, let me start with you. The market looks bad. What's your thinking about it? How long do you think this decline is going to last? What are the underpinnings of the market look like? How do you see things right now? Well, I think that it's the obvious first that there isn't anything that is going real well in markets. It's bonds and stocks, three quarters in a row of stocks and bonds being negative. And that's just so unbelievably rare. Even in periods where you have multiple, multiple quarters of the stock market being down for bonds, which are historically more reverse correlated, to be down as well. It makes it very tough for asset allocators. You know, people are trying to do the right thing and diversify. And what's going on on one side is going down and what's going on on the other side is going down. But Larry, here's the thing I'd say. The beginning of the year, all the way through, let's say the summer, it was the stuff that deserved to go down, getting hit the most. Overpriced tech, a lot of the COVID hot stuff, your crypto stuff, you know, more frothy speculation. What happened, and it wasn't just, it wasn't third quarter. It was just the last few weeks. Mm. Just the last few weeks, value got hit. Dividends got hit. Energy got hit. So the winners of the year finally caught up. And that's generally what you see in later innings of a bear market, that the good stuff goes down with the bad stuff. So I don't know if we're one week away or six months away or nine months in. The average bear market, and we've had 13 of them since World War II, the average is a year. Mm. And we're about, you know, three quarters of the way there on the average. So there's a lot of repricing that had to take place. But that dollar will have to come down and the bond yields will have to come down before stocks can really start to breathe a little. Yeah, interesting point on the rates. Um, your 10-year note is up to 383, up 14 basis points for the week. Of course, the three-month T-bill, which is tracking the Fed funds rate, three and a quarter. It is interesting. The curve is badly inverted, but not three months. Three months, the only thing is still positive curve. But the two years, that I'll call it four and a quarter, and the five years at four. So they're all inverted relative to the 10-year. My view was uh, always that they should have done hundreds, just get it out of the way, rip the Band-Aid off. I mean, you know, David... Bunsen, you see that the so-called market-based indicators, the leading indicators of inflation, are definitely coming down. Uh, it's a very clear trend. Uh, I watch the CRB futures. That's been making another leg down. Of course, the dollar is very, very strong. But um, the actual inflation reports, and the, look, the Fed institutionally has to deal with the actual inflation reports. So... You know, I think John Carney's got a point. The Fed's going to be tougher, and that's uh, obviously not going to help stocks in the next bunch of months, Dave Bonson. Well, I think the possible, the other side of that is not necessarily a disagreement about the facts, but a disagreement about how it gets priced in markets. Because one could argue, and, and candidly, I, I pretty much agree with John Carney on most things, and you know I agree with you on virtually everything, but I think that is what's happened is that the market, everything John just said is what the markets have been pricing. So now I think you end up with risk the other direction because the worst case of Fed tightening may very well be priced in mm. and any hint of something not as tight as feared could become a rally catalyst. And, and I'll give you an example. I don't believe they're going to go forward with the violence of quantitative tightening that they've been projecting. I don't think they can. I don't think they have prepayments in, in mortgages. They're going to allow them to sell mortgage-backed securities at that level. Mm. And I don't think that the financial system can withstand the extraction of liquidity that they've said they'll do. On the Fed fund side, the only thing I'd say is if, you, if we think they're really taking their cues, 
from PCE and CPI reports as opposed to just using those for cover. The problem is that rents and housing are coming down, even though it hasn't been reflected in the numbers yet. August had the first national decline of rents in years, Hmm. but we don't see it in PCE for a couple months because of the lag effect. So you think that, just to clarify, you think the potential Fed tightening is now priced into stocks? Or, or getting very close. I mean, if it isn't totally priced, it's far more priced than it was. It happened very quickly. This is a really new element in markets. They take bad news and price them in quickly. I mean, this was one of the worst months for stocks that mm. most people will see in a career. Mm. And, and there wasn't really anything that catastrophic fundamentally. But I just think you get no buyers, all sellers, and they price in where the worst scenarios could go pretty quickly. And so, yeah, the Fed the Fed is going to get it higher than we all thought they would at one point. But there is a level at which everyone thinking that Powell is Volcker is going to be revealed to be untrue. <laughs> he cannot handle a severe <laughs> recession. He can't do it. I know, and he won't get any support from the White House. You know, I was surprised to read the story this morning's uh, Wall Street Journal, uh, Lael Brainerd, who's, you know, always on the left side, dovish side. But she came out and gave a talk, I don't know, yesterday, the day before, that was very tough, very restrictive, saying the Fed's going to stay the course. So that's Lael Brainerd. Take it for what it's worth. David Bonson, I don't know if you've heard anything about emergency meeting by the Fed or emergency statements or worried about the bond market. But, David, let me add one other thing. I was quite surprised to see the... GDP tracker from the Atlanta Fed ratcheted up from, this is for the third quarter estimate. They were at 0.3%, call it flat. Now they're at 2 plus 2.6%. That's a big number for the third quarter. Kind of comes out of left field. I have not dug into it, but I wondered if you got a 2.5% quarter, I would say that would put even more pressure on the Fed for maybe all the wrong reasons, I'm saying, but that might even put more pressure on the Fed to be even tougher. Well, of course, if they that would be if they erroneously believe, which I suspect they do, that economic growth is inflationary, which it is not and does not have to be. But here's the thing about that GDP number, and a lot of people politically won't like what I'm about to say. It's because the stuff that was giving the negative GDP before was kind of the weak sauce stuff, inventories and things like that. I'm a supply sider, as is one of the greatest living economists who is the host of this radio show, (laughs) who taught me everything I know about supply side economics. And Larry, I care about non-residential fixed investment. Mm. That's the input to GDP I care about, business investment. That part didn't really go down that much. It wasn't up much either. It was kind of flattish in Q1 and Q2. The part Atlanta's looking at now is that the inventories are reversed because they're very volatile. But the consumer is still spending because the consumer is able to spend and inflation's up. So there's a little higher number in the the spending. It's it's a business investment. That's the long-term number I care about. And quarter over quarter, when inventories pull you down, they can pull you back up. And that's what I think you're seeing. Yeah, tr- uh, trade, too. I think oh, trade yeah, that's is right. yeah. another one of yeah. those swing factors. But you're right. Business investment should be the heart of it. Yep. Uh, all things production and manufacturing should be the, the heart of it. Actually, Mark Skousen tracks this GO gross output, where he looks under the hood at the intermediate and early stages of process, business, basically business to business spending and investing uh, has held up. It has held up. And, you know, on the supply side of the economy, that's good. If only policies, you know, tax and regulatory policies would encourage that instead of discouraging it. But you, uh, you guys are not hearing anything yet about some kind of emergency Fed uh, meeting or Fed statement. Is that right? Either of you? I'm not hearing anything. I don't know if John is. But one, what I'll say real quickly is what John said before, this dollar liquidity shortage, it's the biggest story in the world economically. It's just almost impossible to talk about because it's very complicated. I mean, it's not merely an emerging market story. It's fascinating. Emerging markets are down 27 and the S&P is down 25 mm. normally with Fed tightening. 
emerging markets should be down double what the S&P is. And so, but yeah, the dollar shortage is a major story worldwide. David, uh, politics in the stock market, what do you think? Yeah, you know, there is this little fact a lot of people in my business point out all the time. You know how many negative years we've had in the market in the third year of a presidential administration after the midterm? Mm -hmm. Not, none. Mm -hmm. It hasn't happened. Huh. It's a pretty weird statistic. It's one of those kind of Joe DiMaggio records that doesn't ever seem <laughs> to get broken. And a lot of it is generally believed to be because in the second year, you know, they do policies that they can have time to come back from. And in the third year, they have to start ramping up. This, this administration doesn't care about that. They're not going to do anything supply side. They're not going to deregulate. They're obviously not going to cut taxes. But is the Fed going to be done with all their tightening? You know, I've believed that for my whole career, mm. that politics is second and monetary policy is first yeah. when it comes to markets. Uh, and all both of those things are after earnings. Earnings are the mother's milk. Yes. And so that's the issue that we have to look at is have corporate earnings been adjusted downward enough right. yet. I don't think they necessarily have, but valuations have come down a lot. All right. Profits are the mother's milk of stocks. We will watch the earnings reports in the weeks ahead. David Bonson, thank you.